All right, guys. So here's another video from the from the psychiatry aspect. And again, we we thought we could do a better job, kind of condensing these videos down to something a lot less less time consuming. Uh, when I was studying, I never watched a video more than probably 15 minutes long. Otherwise, I was thinking, okay, that's just too long. If they can't teach it to me in in less than that time, uh, then I don't need to be watching it. So we're gonna redo all those uh, psychiatry videos. Uh, so this is the one that's gonna be on defense mechanisms. Uh, the key to this is obviously no mature versus immature, but then there's a couple in there that you need to make sure you understand uh, projection versus displacement and suppression versus repression, and of course the, the splitting. But we'll cover all those in the video, and uh, we hope you like it. All right, guys, so let's talk about the defense mechanisms, and we're going to cover a couple quick, really important points here. This first question says, a very close friend of yours is running for city council. On the night of the election, he decides to go to bed early and not wait, out, wait up uh, for, their, for the election results. He states, it's out of my hands now, so there's no need to worry about it. Which of the following defense mechanisms is your friend exhibiting? Okay, so we have to know there's mature versus um, immature, okay? And, and really you just have to, if you know the mature ones, everything else obviously falls in the other one. The mature ones are only four, S-A-S-H, the ones that we learn. The first one is sublimation, okay? And that's like you would say, you know, channeling, um, you know, channeling your uh, negative thoughts or emotions into something uh, positive. Okay, that's the person who becomes a great lawyer because they went through tr earlier trouble in their life. They become a, a great athlete based on uh, the emotions that they push more into the training. Then this one is going to be the uh, altruism. Okay, that's like when you when you donate or you give back without you know as as way to overcome your guilt, and then you have suppression, which is very important here. That's going to be your voluntarily withholding thoughts and emotions um, at it. You know, so kind of suppressing them voluntarily. Though that's the key. And then the last one is humor. So in this hand, this guy says, look, I'm just not going to worry about it because it's out of my hands. He is voluntarily making a mature choice, and so that's going to be suppression, okay? It's voluntary. Now, the key with this on step one, two, and three is you better know that they're going to put suppression and repression in the same answer choice. They just will, flat out, because it, repression is an immature one, and that's going to be involuntary. That's just like the person who's went, uh, went through a trauma or something, and they say, hey, look, no, I don't, I don't recall. I don't recall. Um, I, don't, I don't know, it's just too much for them. And that's an immature, uh, say, defense mechanism. But it's involuntary. If it's voluntary, it's suppression. You have to know that, okay? Denial just means basically it didn't exist. Sublimation, that's that pot mature one. And basically, again, you're just channeling uh, negative thoughts into something more positive. Again, it's the athlete. It's the person who excels in something. And then humor, obviously, is just, uh, you know, you're using humor to kind of kind of play it off, okay? But you better just know mature, S-A-S-H. And then for this purpose, you better know the difference between repression and suppression. This one says, a 26-year-old woman with a history of cutting comes into your office uh, for initial evaluation. She states that she would like to have a referral to a good therapist in the area as she states her last therapist wasn't any good. After two minutes into the interview, the patient states, I can tell you really understand me, but states your staff um, was very mean to her. The patient exhibiting what defense mechanism? So when you go down through here, you're like, oh, transference, I don't know, I don't know, and you get the borderline personality, and like, oh yeah, that's what she is, right? Correct, but is that a defense mechanism? No, that's a personality disorder, so don't get distracted by that, okay? This is a defense mechanism. What is she doing? She's saying, you're good, they're bad. That's splitting. Now, splitting is associated with borderline personality disorder, but the question said, what's a defense mechanism? And that's going to be splitting. And, of course, splitting is one of those uh, immature defense mechanisms, okay? And it's, everything's black or white, good or bad, associated with borderline personality. And you better bet that on step one, and you can even come back and tell me it after the fact, they're going to ask you a question about borderline personality disorder. For displacement, remember, displacement has an A. So again, displacement's also an immature defense mechanism. But what I want you to, how you're going to remember that, displacement has an A, and that A is going to mean anger. This per, you know, anytime someone's angry, throwing stuff, you know, taking it out on somebody physical stuff, displacement, anger. Transference and countertransference. If it goes from the patient, you know, to the, say, therapist, 
you know, if the patient is treating or pretending like the therapist is their parent, their caregiver, something along those lines, if the patient's thoughts go toward the therapist as being somebody, then that's transference. Now, when it goes back from the therapist to the patient, meaning like, you know, the, the patient reminds, the patient reminds the therapist of like uh, an, an ex, you know, an ex-partner or something like that, that's called counter-transference. And a lot of times you'll say, you know, when I'm in the room with this person, I just feel a certain way. Well, that means you're having counter-transference toward uh, the patient, okay? So we just remember that transference goes from the patient to the therapist, counter-transference goes from the therapist, you, back to the patient, displacement is anger. This is a personality disorder. It's associated with splitting. This one says, a, care, a primary care provider, um, at you are basically, seeing a 32-year-old male for routine follow-up. Um, he reports that whenever he has has a, has a difficult day at work, he seems to go home and take it out on his family. He states that this has led to issues with his marriage as well as his relationship with his children who see him throw objects around the house when he has just loses it. Which of the following defense mechanisms is the patient most likely demonstrating? Okay, well this guy's acting out. Did he actually do something, say, physical? Yes, he's throwing objects around the house. That He's pretty angry, right? Anger as the A. You better be jumping all over displacement. And I'm telling you, they love to make sure that you can differentiate between displacement and projection, right? Because this one, this one, you think anger, it's physical, it's an action, okay? Projection has an O, and you're gonna put that one with thoughts, okay? So you're projecting their thoughts. This is the one where like, if someone, you know, if you're, you're with someone and they keep accusing you of cheating, well, if, if I were you, I'd be kind of like, well, okay, something's going on here. If you're accusing me of cheating, then, then are, you, you know, are you projecting onto me? What are you doing? Um, but that's where someone puts their thoughts onto somebody to kind of negate or reduce the feelings that they're having inside. So chances are they're doing whatever they're projecting. Um, so just remember like cheating or something like that's the thoughts. But if it's an action and it's anger, you better put displacement. You better know the difference between these two. Now in this situation, in this question, this guy's definitely got displacement, okay? Altruism, it's again, that's like donating your time, volunteering um, to suppress your feelings of guilt for um, perhaps something that you did or something that occurred to you. Transference and trying to transfer, transfer it goes from the patient to the therapist. Counter transfer, it goes from the therapist back to the back to the patient, okay? This one says, a self-made millionaire is being interviewed for a documentary on how he went from being homeless to worth 2.5 million. He tells the host that he remembers vividly what it felt like not to have food for himself or his brothers and sisters. He reports that he always found motivation in working hard due to his difficult uh, beginnings. Which of the following defense mechanisms is he exhibiting? So he was homeless, he turned it into 2.5 uh, million. So he took a negative situation and used it to, as his motivation. And we're obviously gonna call that sublimation, right? That's one of those uh, four, four mature defense mechanisms. Sublimation, altruism, you know, donating your time, um, and so on, gifts, and uh, suppression. That's the voluntary withholding. And then humor, all right? And then everything else is gonna be immature. So repression, remember we said that's the involuntary. That's the person who says, I just can't recall. I don't remember. You know, it's immature. Suppression, that's the voluntary uh, withholding of a thought or emotion. Displacement, that's the A for anger. Projection, that's the one that has thoughts. That's the, the guy who's telling you or lady telling you you're cheating when it's actually probably them, okay? And then rationalize, you know, obviously rationalization is just trying to justify uh, some type of illogical process, like, you know, you lost your job. Yeah, I didn't like that, you know, didn't like it anyways. You're just kind of um, trying to rationalize your way uh, through that. But the answer to this question is going to be sublimation because he, it was a positive. He, you know, turned a negative emotion into a positive. But I'll tell you this, for step one, you better know, uh, you know, I put these in here for a reason. Repression versus suppression, you better know, and displacement versus projection. I'm willing to, 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 to bet you a drink um, that you'll see those on your on your exams, okay? 
And then this one, it says, on uh, one of your patients is a 35-year-old female who routinely volunteers her time at a local food bank every Thursday. She reports that whenever she feels down about her humble beginnings, she feels that this donation of her time helps her deal with her feelings and emotions. You have learned that her behaviors are very altruistic. Okay, well, they gave it to you. You recall that this is a mature defense mechanism, which the following is not a mature defense mechanism. Now, you see how this question was written. You know, you, you, you went through all this nonsense, and then at the end of the day, they tell you it's altruistic. They want to know, do you know which are in which category, okay? So again, if you know the mature ones, everything else is going to be the immature. So altruistic is mature. Which of these is mature? There's our um, sublimation. There's our altruism, suppression, and humor. Those are all mature. Which one is not mature? That's going to be the repression, you know, involuntary withholding. But the purpose of this question was just, it was just to kind of prove that even though it's, 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 sometimes it's not as easy, easy as those previous ones where it's just a one step, here's what it is, you tell, me, you tell me the answer. Now you will see those, but there's a possibility they can ask it this way to where you gotta know the categories, just like what they did on those uh, personality disorders. So I hope you liked this guys, hope it was helpful, and we will see you next video.